Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Cue the bagpipes. Last weekend it was an Australian watch on the channel. This weekend it is a Scottish watch on the channel. Who says I'm partisan about the content I produce here? Seriously though, I've only looked at a couple of vaguely Scottish watches over the last few years. The Acura Wayfarer about two years ago and last year the Marlowe Morar with Morag the Loch Morar Monster on the case back. Today it is the Zebec Corsair, a brand new watch from a brand new brand launching on Kickstarter this weekend. I will leave a link to either their website or the Kickstarter campaign in the description of the video. I was delighted when Callum, the owner, got in touch. He's from Long Nidri in East Lothian, only a couple of miles outside of Edinburgh. Edinburgh also, by the way, a tropical paradise. Actually, I lived there for four years. It was bloody freezing. Now, the Zebec website is music to my ears because there is repeated emphasis on the Scots love of value for money, something that has been a central tenet of the Just One More Watch channel from the very beginning. As such, Callum is hoping to offer the maximum amount of watch for the minimum amount of outlay. The early bird specials on these is 199 Great British Pounds, which I think is a very fair price. There's also quite a lot of tongue-in-cheek humour running through the website. Zebec Corsair both have pirate connotations, as does the logo of the brand, which is a parrot. I kid you not. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. And there it is, Archie the Parrot, apparently named after the owner's father-in-law. Now, I'm not sure whether that's a sure way to ingratiate yourself or alienate yourself from your father-in-law. Time will tell on that front. Not only is the parrot on the dial, it's on the case back and on the crown of the watch as well. Like I said, there is a rather tongue-in-cheek thing happening here, a little bit of Scottish humour. Check the website for more details. Apparently, Callum grew up on the beach at Long Nidri and there was an old shipwreck there and he used to play pirates and it all rather stuck and like he said the whole maritime nautical thing has been done to death so why not do something a little different now i should have pointed out in the intro this video is sponsored by Zebec. Should their campaign be successful, they will be sending me one of these in the colorway of my choosing and i will choose the orange because i like it so what then is the Zebec Corsair? Well, we have a solidly made, chunky, all stainless, inner rotating bezel compressor style dive watch with 200 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, a Seiko NH movement, super engineer bracelet, nice clasp and good loom. I reckon 200 quid is a fair price for this one. Really, it comes down to whether or not you go for the parrot if you're appreciative of the slightly tongue-in-cheek pirate theme and whether you like the looks of this one overall. 42 millimeters in diameter, only 12 and a half mil thick. Now that is fairly good going considering it is a Seiko NH movement and they do have a fairly tall pinion stack. 46 and a half lug to lug though. That is a fairly compact lug to lug dimension. So it is a fairly chunky watch, but it sits nicely on wrist. 20 mil lug width, I think, help to bring it down visually. Tapering down to 17 and a half, back up to just over 20 at the clasp. Sized up for me, seven inch wrist, 171 grams. So yeah, definitely a bit of chunk to it. Flat sapphire crystal with anti-reflective undercoating. Now, two crowns, if you are familiar with this inner rotating dive time bezel, rather than using a physical bezel on the outside, side that you rotate, you twist the top crown to rotate that inner bezel. It doesn't screw down though, it is more susceptible to knocks than it would be where it screwed down. The bottom one is screwed down though and you adjust the movement as standard. Now it is a Seiko NH38 in here as opposed to the NH35 so no date watch with no date movement which is always a nice touch. Case finishing is mostly brushed. In fact, the whole watch is mostly brushed. There's only a couple of high polished edges here and there that I'll point out. Vertical brush on the mid case and that fixed bezel has three different surfaces, all with a circular brush. There's a kind of side, a top, and a little chamfered edge there. I like that crown. I like the crown that operates the movement. Not only do I quite like the parrot logo, but it's a good chunky little crown and is well machined. And nice to see that little color match, matching the inner rotating bezel, the kind of re chapter ring and the second hand there in orange. 
and I like the bracelet. Super engineer, I haven't encountered one of these before, but I hope I encounter them again in the future. It's chunky, but it's also very comfortable. So five lengths, meaning there's quite a bit of flex here. It's almost like a kind of chunkier version of a Jubilee. Now these are just push pins rather than screw links, but for less than 300 USD, I'm not gonna complain too much about that, especially when this is the holy grail of micro brand clasps, in my opinion anyway. We have the brand logo stamped rather than printed on there on the fold over, double security pusher, it's a proper mill clasp and six levels of micro adjust with a high polished chamfered edge. That to my mind anyway is just about as good as it gets. And you got a sneak peek of the case back earlier on, solid end links for that super engineer bracelet by the way. Callum's logic was the Seiko NH movement isn't much of a looker, so why not make it a solid case bank which helps with the water resistance rating and also another opportunity to slap the parrot on there. They may not be the most exciting movements in the world, but they are generally solid and dependable in my experience of the many hundreds of Seiko 4R and NH movements that I've had through the house and on the time grapher. They usually come in around the plus 10 seconds per day and this one is no different with a healthy amplitude and perhaps a slightly higher beat error than I would have expected from a freshie, but this one has been around the world a couple of times already. 21,600 vibrations per hour, so three hertz beat rate, 24 joule, hacking and hand winding, and it winds in two directions, meaning you don't get any of the spinning and wobbling you do with the equivalent Miyota. But let's get back to the dial and let's start with a slightly unusual angle under macro outside because I think this angle best illustrates how they have done the dial. The indexes aren't painted on, they're not applied either. They are embossed, so kind of push through from the back and paint applied on top. You can see that 3D texturing, the depth and layering there from that slightly odd angle. And slightly odd, I guess, could be applied to the whole of this dial. It's certainly not another Rolex ripoff, that's for sure. You've got prominent rectangular indexes at the three, the six and nine, and a similar one at 12, but with a circular cutout. That'll make more sense when I show you the loom video in just a second or two. There are slightly smaller, free-floating rectangles at the other hour markers, and three rather unusual triangles pointing inwards at the three, the six and the nine. Archie the Parrot, the brand name, just printed on in white under the index at 12, and automatic 200 meters, advertising the 200 meters of water resistance, printed above that triangle at six. Now, because this is a compressed style with that inner rotating bezel, the chapter ring, the Riho, in effect moves. There's a prominent triangle at 12, which is loomed, I'll show you that in a second, and Arabics, noting the five minute markers around the outer edges. There's also another little printed white square on each of those five minute points, just in case you get confused. Now the hands, there's a large arrowhead hour hand, a fairly standard looking fence post minute hand, both in silver, and a color matched orange second hand with a prominent diamond tip all the way out of the edge, just about touching the Riho. A lot going on. In some ways, that all makes more sense after dark than it does with the lights on. C3 Superluminova, a good choice here. Really, really strong loom from those embossed indexes and on the hands as well. And that circular cutout in the rectangle at 12 makes sense after dark, as do those three little triangles. You can tell which way this watch is aligned quickly and easily. End of the 20 minute session, no problems at all getting a good clean read off of this one. And that's it on wrist. I have a roughly seven inch wrist. In case this is the first time you are watching one of my videos or you have just forgotten the fact that I've mentioned it in all 592 previous installments. Plenty of presents from this one because it is a fairly chunky watch at 42. You've got that big stainless steel bezel plus the color that comes from that orange. Inner rotating bezel, super, super comfortable bracelet though. I really do like this bracelet and clasp combo up there with the best at the price. Overhead shot, no problem problems at all with legibility, especially with that big handset against the black dial. Slight tonal mismatch though between the hour hand, the minute hand and those embossed indexes. Now outside in natural light, it's a piece of flat sapphire with anti-reflective undercoating, but because it's flat, occasionally, depending on the angle, you do get a little bit of flecto. Legibility though is pretty good all round. And that's it on wrist. Not only does that super engineer bracelet wear comfortably, it also looks good. All of those individual links catching the light nicely. Reminds me a bit of the Seiko SKX 007009, similar diameter dimension, similarly short lug to lug. Looking down my wrist, you can see those lugs do point down. It does have quite a high side, but because it has an inner bezel, you don't get that extra height, only 12 and a half mil. 
And that's the pocket shot to finish. I always appreciate when brands have a 40 plus watch, a larger size watch, but still use 20 millimeter lug width. I think proportionally it always looks much more resolved than with a 22. But just because this watch is Scottish does not mean to say it's going to get off scot-free today. I've still got a few moans and niggles. I mentioned earlier on the fact that this top crown does not screw down means if you are going to be timing something with the bezel, whether that be a parking meter, a boiling egg or a shock horror, a dive that you may be on, you're going to have to be careful not to knock it because it is a little bit sensitive. And that 200 meters printed above the triangle at six, that does not look right to me. The M is larger than the two for a start and there is an awkward gap between the two. I reckon they need to resolve that one for production units. And then let's circle back to where this review began. Archie the parrot on the dial. I mean, good on Callum for producing a dual crown in a rotating bezel compressor case dive watch with a super engineer bracelet, good loom, a decent clasp and a parrot on the dial. You certainly don't see many of them often. This is the first one I've seen. If you get it, if you're into that style, if you don't mind a little bit of tongue in cheek humor here and there, then perhaps this is the one for you. Perhaps though the parrot might be just a little bit cartoonish for some. And then there's the design language overall, an unusual mixture of circles, triangles and rectangles on the dial. Again, good on him for not doing another Submariner homage. Perhaps this will make more sense if Zbeck continue to do future models and continue some of this design language there. At the moment though, in isolation, it does look a little bit unusual. But like I said, if you're into the looks, if you like the parrot thing and you like the look of this watch overall, it's very well made, it's very solid, it's got all the right specs and 200 quid is a good price for it. So there you have it, the Corsair by Zbeck, proving that there is still plenty of room within the sub 300 US dollar Seiko NH powered dive watch category for originality and pirates. If you can snag one of these on the early bird, 200 quid, I reckon that's a very, very good price for a watch that clearly has been well made. Fantastic clasp, really interesting bracelet, and it's a nice, big, handsome, easy to read watch that looks like it can take a walloping. I wish Callum and his company all the best. Thanks for watching. I will see you in a future video.